Leonardo. I'm a chemical engineer. Um, I graduated in Brazil in 2011, and since then I worked for the oil and gas industry in Brazil. And I came to Sydney last year to study for a master's degree in chemical engineering. And I have a big interest for the energy sector, and that's why my dissertation is also related with energy, more specifically with renewable energy fuels. So the presentation I'm going to give is quite short. It has some, a lot of data that doesn't, were not generated by me. They're all available on the internet. So I provide all the references if you want to find the data, they're not mine. It's just data that I found during my research and I think it's interesting to share here because we talk a lot about electricity, power generation, but we don't talk that much in my view in the past, we haven't talked about that in the past few uh, meetings about transportation because it's a little bit different. Um, so that picture was me working on the pilot plan that we have at the university with, to convert biomass into fuels and I'm going to talk about that later. But one message that I wanted to um, give here is how relevant the transportation sector is in terms of energy. So starting from Australia, transportation consumes just as much energy as electricity generation. So if we want to reach a renewable future in terms of energy, we have to talk about transportation as well. Um, these three fuels, they supply more than 90% of the energy required for transportation in Australia. Petrol, diesel, and jet fuel. So, and they're all fossil fuels. This is just one of many projections that I found about which fuels Australia is going to use in the future. This report, where I got this uh, graph, contains many other projections. And, but what's important to see here is that in this case, the authors believe that diesel and petrol will remain the main fuels for many years to 2050. And they give many reasons for that. This, uh, I've seen uh, another projection with electricity increasing much, much faster than this. And it obviously depends on the assumptions that you make for those projections. But here, they believe that infrastructure constraints might reduce the speed of growth of electricity-based uh, transportation. When we look wor worldwide, the share of transportation in energy consumption is very similar to what's in Australia. And to 2040, according to this reference, it will remain around 26%. Remember that in Australia it's around 27.5, so it's very similar. And also more than 90% is provided by liquid fuels like petrol and diesel and jet fuel. But this percentage is projected to decrease, but still to a very high number, 88% in 2040. When we look uh, at each fuel, how they contribute to the world, this is still the world, the world's energy mix uh, for transportation, we see that gasoline Diesel and jet fuel are very, very relevant. And natural gas is projected to increase. And in this prediction, electricity remains small. This is from an American association. So depending on where you get the information, you see electricity taking over uh, petrol, for example. Because for small vehicles, especially for small vehicles, batteries uh, are a good alternative because weight is not a really big problem and range to drive in the city is not a big problem. But in the case of an airplane, for example, a commercial airplane, where the, the weight is quite a constraint and you need a big range, the batteries that we have today uh, still don't, cannot replace um, the liquid fuel that we use. So I wanted to talk, this is just a background so I read about this while I'm developing my dissertation just to get an idea what, how relevant 
is the problem I'm trying to, to tackle with my research. So I think it's quite relevant. And I also read about different ways of producing liquid fuels. So we know quite well the two top ones, I believe, uh, the uh, production of ethanol from the fermentation of sugars. In my country, that's a very relevant uh, source of energy for transportation because all the petrol in Brazil comes pre-mixed with 20 to 25% ethanol. So it's a, quite a relevant fuel in Brazil. In biodiesel, depending on the country, you have 1% mix and it, will, it may increase with time. But these processes are well known. The process I'm studying at the University of Sydney is hydrothermal liquefaction. And it's a bit different from the other two uh, in many aspects, but also in the products. Because it produces not only a fuel that you can put in your car or truck, it may also produce fuels for airplanes. And they're very dense in energy. That's why they could be used for those applications. And you produce um, those fuels from agricultural residues, wood, and a lot of people are researching how to produce fuels from algae. One of the advantages of doing that is we already produce a lot of biomass in agricultural residues. And we don't use those to produce liquid fuels that could be used in our vehicles. That's why I'm interested in, in this research. And what this process is, is just combining biomass with water at high pressure and high temperature. So this is around 300, 350 degrees Celsius and 200, up to 200 bar pressure. And you produce a gas phase rich in CO2, which is quite small in, in relative quantity. The oil phase, which is what we're interested in, an aqueous phase and solids. So we want to produce a lot of this and not, uh, not so much of the other ones. And so what I'm studying now is one of the issues with that process to, for that process to become a reality is how to make, how to treat this aqueous stream. It contains uh, many organic substances. It's quite toxic. So we have to be able to clean that before this becomes true. So that's where my research in, uh, is focused. So one of the estimates I found about uh, biomass production in Australia is that there are, we already produce 20 million tons of biomass per year, including crop residues, soil meal residues, and harvest residues. This estimate um, I did myself based on the information about uh, pig population in Australia. And these numbers are quite high, but they don't mean we can use all that to produce fuels because it's not economical to get all of that together in one place and produce a fuel. But still, it's a big number and a small share of it can contribute to the future of renewable energy. Thank you.